Hey, spring weather is definitely out. Beautiful, warm, perfect timing for starting to plant the spring garden because the soil is warming up to enable the seeds to germinate. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Hello, welcome back to Pine Meadows Hobby Farm. I'm your host, Jerry Hansen. Enjoying a bit of the sunshine today. And uh, I did some gardening yesterday. Today, I'm just kind of taking a break. I had to run to town, had to do some errands. Yeah, we got some stuff going on in the background. I'll explain that later. Uh, interesting things happening in my life. Very interesting, good, productive, and you guys are going to be shocked and surprised. So there is a sample of a teaser of what's coming. Yeah, it's big. So as you can see, I've been doing some gardening. I've got the soils topped off in my raised beds. Uh, you know, after every year, your your soils that you have in there, you, you they decompose and they settle. So you want to stock more on top of it along with some good rich organic material and that way your seeds can really be fed to grow and produce a really good crop for you. So uh, of course on my hoops here like last year I've got my peas planted on the first one on both sides and these two back here I've got uh, I'll be growing some pickling cucumbers because I can lay those up for the year. We still have cucumbers that I've pickled and we're still eating on those. So the family loves my pickles, gotta grow cucumbers, can't get away with it. This back part of the garden I was planning on, well I've got some mulch down, uh, two different types of mulch I have. Black visqueen or black plastic uh, that is a form of mulch, and we do have the wood shavings to, keep, to protect the black visqueen from being uh, destroyed by the sun's UV light. It will happen, so uh, that's a good overlaying, but that's not my uh, eventual plan. My eventual plan is to lay a good weed, uh, pervious weed barrier that allows water to go through but not weeds to come up and then lay some pea gravel down over the top like I did in the front part of the garden so the whole garden will eventually look like this. But I don't think, you know, with truth be told, I don't think I will be doing it this year because I have obligations I want to fulfill this year that we're just going to put this on the back burner. Just put it that way because that's part of the surprise on what I need to talk to you guys about in a future video. But since I'm not producing any more raised beds back here like I wanted to, I went ahead and just pulled out all my big buckets. I topped them off with uh, compost and soil and then we've got the racks in each one of them. Uh, I planted I'm, I'm, I'm going to try. I, we'll, we'll try it. They, they, they seem to do well. We're planting corn. Uh, we're planting squash. I've got zucchini in the front six. And in the back four, we got a summer squash. And then I've got string beans planted. So we've got a companion crop going in these buckets. Or what they call a sister crop. And then, of course, up here, I'm still working out what I'm planning to plant. I've got some potatoes in this garden, but we're gonna do carrots. We're gonna fill this garden out with carrots and turnips. And then we'll go ahead and lay that cedar mulch over the top of it because cedar will repel insects. Cedar will also repel rodents. And then these little devices I got, these solar powered devices I got, 
are repelling gophers, moles, voles, yeah, those creatures. And they're supposed to even repel snakes, which is just fine with me. I don't like coming out here and encountering a snake while I'm gardening. But snakes are beneficial for the garden because they do eat pesky uh, bugs. Frogs. We get frogs out here. They'll eat the bugs too. Don't mind them, but the snakes will eat the frogs too. Eh, it's a given. So long as they're just a guard or snake variety, not rattlesnake. Now, we don't have any other type of snake that are venomous around the area except for the rattlesnake. We have those. Uh, we don't have cotton mouth. We don't have copperhead. Uh, we don't have black snakes here. Uh, they, they just aren't here in the Cascade Ranges. We have gopher snakes. Those are here. Grass snakes, which are little long green snakes. And yes, the timber rattlers. We got those. Uh, don't want to encounter the rattlers. Anyway, back to the garden. Looking good, huh? As you can tell, with my development on the garden, I've managed to mitigate my arch nemesis weeds as you can tell there are weeds here but they're not a whole lot i can weed the whole garden in probably an hour and it's ready to ready to start planting uh, i love it i love this method with um, mulching with a weed barrier and pea gravel makes the service so much easier and cleaner to walk on much better Harvested some grapes this year, or last year, harvested the grapes and made some wine. Yeah, I gave some wine away, gifted it. Uh, I drank some of it. It came out a little stronger than I thought it would. I tell you what, it really packed a punch. It was good wine. It was really good wine, but... My bad, my fail, the bud, it, it is just now starting to bud, so I'm going to leave it alone. What I failed to do is prune the grapevines uh, at the proper time. Uh, so midsummer, um, I'll go ahead and prune these back, but right now I'm just leaving them alone. I did prune them heavily before harvest, so the grapes, the sun can get to the grapes and really sweeten up the grapes. These are Catawba. I, uh, wow, I want to grow some more of these. They make a really good wine. And then of course in the greenhouse we got this, uh, a head start on some of the plants because Mother Nature was sure cranky this year. Trying, She couldn't decide whether she wanted to go spring or winter. It was just one day is one thing, the next day is another thing. Just could not decide. So I went ahead and started some plants indoors. We're going to go ahead and move them outdoors next week. I got my beds ready. Uh, we're going to go cabbage and just mainly stuff we eat. Cabbage and broccoli, Brussels sprouts. Uh, th those are cold weather crops. We're going to do carrots, turnip. I'm going to do Swiss chard and kale. And a lot of lettuce and radish, uh, beets. And that's about it aside from experimenting with the corn and then we're going to do string beans must do spring uh, string beans peas because i got to can some peas and then also we're going to be ca ca uh, canning cucumbers making those really good pickles also i wanted to point out the apple tree and the fruit trees i didn't prune the other fruit trees they're still kind of new and taking root so i don't want to prune those but i showed you guys Last fall where I pruned heavily the apple tree, I just cut it down, got all the sucker branches out, and this one grows five variety of apples. You can see where one of the varieties, or a couple of the varieties are blooming right here. So they no, don't all produce and bloom at the same time. But what's nice about this apple tree is some apples need cross-pollination with another apple source. Well, this is all built into one tree. Plus, I have another apple over it, a honey crisp. It'll cross pollinate with this one, so I didn't have to plant a second one. So I've got six variety of apples that I'm expecting from my trees, and this tree is good. Now, the reason why I cut it down and I keep it pruned down is because I don't want to have to use a ladder to harvest my apples. Nope, don't want to. 
So that's it on the homestead garden here early spring. Uh, a lot of ambitious stuff to do. And I'll get it done because I'm not going to go overboard and really go into developing the back because, like I said, I'm saving the resources for uh, something else. And then we'll go ahead and tackle that maybe next year. Well, definitely next year or at the end of the year, we'll definitely do that. Maybe later in the uh, uh, early fall or late summer. We'll see. We'll see. Right now, things are a little bit fluid here on the homestead because... It's just weird how things are happening. Uh, I'll explain in another episode. Stay tuned to that. Anyway, I'm your host, Jerry Hansen. This is Pine Meadows Hobby Farm. We're a frugal homestead tucked high in the Cascade Ranges of the Pacific Northwest. I'm just demonstrating my triumphs and my failures and showing you guys how I'm learning how to homestead. That's it. Nothing more. Just learning how to do this. Be safe, always be kind. We'll see you guys in the next adventure. Bye-bye now.